you guys. Welcome to Flickers of Fear, doing another movie review and doing another kind of 60s underseen kind of classic, I want to say. Just like a couple weeks back when I did Night Tide, I've kind of been going through Shudder and I'm trying to like catch up on like some older movies that I maybe missed out on or hadn't heard of or anything like that because I was actually going to do a different movie this week. But then I was kind of scrolling through Shudder's, you know, kind of old black and white movies and I was kind of like, man, that's like that sounds really good. And like the pedigree of it uh, had me really interested. And it's about witches. And you guys know how much I love movies about witchcraft. So I was like, OK, well, I'm going to do that one instead. So this is a 1962 movie in the U.S. It's known as Burn Witch Burn. Uh, although I think in other territories, particularly in the UK, it was actually released as Night of the Eagle, which kind of makes sense because of the end. But honestly, I kind of think Burn Witch Burn is a better title, just going to say. And this is actually an adaptation of a novel by Fritz Leiber called Conjure Wife, which I think I read when I was a teenager now that I'm thinking about it. This is actually not the first adaptation of it. I think there had been another one in the 40s because the novel came out I think it came out like serialized in the or in like 1943 or something like that and then like it came out as a book 10 years later so it was adapted I think in the 40s with Lon Chaney Jr and I think it was called Weird Woman and then there was an adaptation in 1979 with Terry Garr but I can't remember what it was called. I'll probably like think of it in a minute. But yeah, so this, weirdly, it's like, even though they've adapted it three times so far, it's never adapted by its name, <laughs> which I don't know why that is. But like I said, so in the US, it's called Burn Witch Burn. In the UK and other territories, it's called Night of the Eagle. Uh, as far as I know, it's on Shudder in the US, and I believe it's also on Shudder in the UK because I saw another uh, an Irish guy reviewing and he said that he'd watched it on Shutter UK. So it's on there uh, as well. So it's like a 1962, it's a black and white movie. And this movie, I'm just surprised that I never, I'd heard the title kind of like around, but I'd never actually sat down and watched it. And actually when I first sat down to watch it, I thought that it was this other movie that I'd seen that I can't even remember the name of now, but that was kind of like an old black and white movie that kind of had some voodoo doll like action going on in it that was also from the 60s. Uh, but this was not that. This was one that I hadn't seen before. And this movie, I gotta say, this was a lot of fun. It's like a real, it's not wacky zany. I don't mean fun like that, but I mean just like fun, just really, really entertaining and really suspenseful. And it just has just, I don't know, it just had a really, really cool vibe to it. I really enjoyed it quite a lot. And uh, it seems that most of the people on Shudder did as well, because it easily has five skulls and like pretty much everyone is like, how did I never see this movie before? It's like so awesome. So especially if you really like 60s horror, if you really like witchcraft type stuff, like suspenseful type stuff like that, then this should be right up your alley. I'd really, really dug it a lot. So, uh, the movie starts out, and I love this. I knew I was going to love this movie, like, in the first two minutes, because it's just a black screen, and then you have the voice of Paul Fries, who, you know, he did, like, a lot of, uh, he did the narration for the Haunted Mansion, like, at Disney World, Disneyland, and stuff, and, you know, millions of other things. He always has that spooky, like, that really spooky voice. So he does this opening narration where he's basically saying in this movie, there's going to be like black magic spells and everything like that. So he's intoning a spell to like protect everybody that's like watching the movie. So you don't get like some black, black magic shit happening to you. So I, I appreciated that. But yeah, so I'm just like, I really, really liked that aspect of it. It sounds cheesy when I say it like that, but I just thought it was like really charming. And I love that guy's voice anyway. So uh, I think when they released it in theaters too, I think like when people came to the theater, like they gave you like a packet of salt, like so you could keep, you could, like put a circle around yourself and like keep evil spirits away. So, you know, the movie follows a dude and his wife. The dude's name is Norman and he's played by Peter Wingard. Now I think that Peter Wingard, this might be his only like his main film role. Cause I think he was mostly known for British TV. It's weird because the original novel, Conjure Wife, was set in New England, I think. But because this was filmed, um, you know, this was made by American International Pictures and they made it in the UK, uh, you know, with mostly a UK cast and crew. So they just like transported it to somewhere in England. I don't even think they say like where it is exactly. Peter Wingard, I'd seen him before, but I think he's better known for being on British TV. And he was also... Um, Peter Quint in The Innocence, which I think was a non-speaking role, if I remember uh, that movie. 
So yeah, so he plays the lead. I think that Peter Cushing was actually supposed to play the lead, but he either couldn't do it or he was ill at the time or something. But anyway, they they couldn't get him. So uh, Peter Wingard kind of got brought in at the last minute. So he plays Norman Taylor. Now Norman Taylor is a college professor. I think it's psychology. I just, I wasn't sure if it was psychology or anthropology or something like that. But at the very beginning, he's giving like a lecture about superstition and about like why people believe it and things like that. So they're setting him up right from the jump as super rational. You know, he just thinks all of the superstition stuff is just bullshit. And uh, so that's kind of where his character's coming from. He's just very adamant that there's no such thing as, you know, supernatural anything. Apparently he's not been at this, uh, he's not been at this job very long and it's implied or it's kind of like exposited that there are some older members of the faculty and there's like a lot of backbiting and shit going on because they're afraid that he's going to get a promotion that some of the other ones wanted and they're just like oh you know he's so he's so he's so much younger and it's like his um students really seem to like him he's like the highest rated professor so there's a lot of like bitchiness and jealousy going on you know campus politics and things like that uh so you know so he's getting a lot of kind of shade from uh, some of the other members of the faculty now he has a wife named Tansy and Tansy, uh, he at first doesn't realize this, but as they, they have like some of the other professors and their wives and shit like over for bridge one night and they're all kind of every, you know, like I said, they're all kind of like throwing shade, even though man, you'd go to somebody else's house and then like start fucking picking on them and like do all these kind of little, little underhanded compliments and shit. It was just like, it, yeah, it was just so bitchy. But uh, so yeah, so they come over and that's, there's all that going on. And then after they leave, Tansy seems to be like looking for something. Like she's freaking out going, where the fuck is this? Where is, and he's like, so what are you looking for? Oh, nothing. Just like some shopping list I lost. I'll make another one. It's no big. And then later he's up trying to find like his pajamas and they're in the laundry. And so he has to like kind of bust open this drawer, like the drawer gets stuck and he has to pull his drawer out so, or her drawer out so he can get into the thing. And then he finds in her drawer, there's like this little, uh, this little, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's like this little container, like with little white skulls or whatever all over it. And there's like a dead spider in there. And so he goes to his wife. He's like, what the, what is this all about? And she said, oh, you know, when we were in Jamaica and I was hanging out with, uh, with that guy and he gave it to me, it's like a good luck charm. So Norman's kind of like, okay, whatever. It's just kind of like, it's a souvenir and all this other kind of shit. So as the story goes on though, um, and Norman starts like finding all these other weird little things like stashed around in little corners of his house. He comes to the realization that his wife, Tansy, actually believes in not really black magic, but she has all of these kind of like protection spells, essentially, uh, that she's put around the house. So he, being like a big rational skeptic and everything, he confronts her. He's like, what the hell is all this bullshit? Like he lays it all on the table. It's just this ridiculous amount of like all these little poppets and all these little things. And she's like, look, this, this shit is real. Uh, when I was in Jamaica, that dude I hung out with, I guess it's like supposed to be Obeya or whatever, but they don't call it that in the, um, in the movie, but I think that's kind of what it is. So she's like, you know, I saw him, you know, bring a woman or a little girl back from the dead. Like there was this woman that said she would trade her life for the little girl and he did it. Like he did the spell and she came back and I, and you know, and she's like, and why do you think that your career and everything has been going so well is because I've had all these protection spells on you. She's like, because some of the other people at the college, she doesn't know who it is, but she's like, some of them are trying to hurt you and they're using black magic to do that. So I have all these spells to protect you. Of course, he does not believe this. And uh, in kind of a dick move, I have to say, um, he makes her burn all of the protection spells. Now, since this is a horror movie, uh, it will not surprise you to learn that pretty much the minute that all of the stuff gets burned, shit starts to go seriously, seriously sideways, like uh, in his career and in all these other things. He gets uh, one girl that's, um, or one young woman that is, uh, that kind of had a little bit of a crush on him or whatever, like in one of his classes, she kind of flips out and like calls him 
like does kind of a fucking like a does like an obscene phone call well i mean obscene for 1962 and then she accuses him of rape and then her boyfriend tries to or like threatens to shoot him and it's like they're trying to get him fired and it's like all this shit like he almost gets hit by a truck there's just all this crazy shit that goes on and so as the movie goes on like and as life gets worse and worse he's starting to think oh you know maybe there is something to this black magic shit that tansy is doing because it just gets worse and worse somebody sends them a recording um and the recording is of a lecture that he gave but there's also this really horrible like high-pitched sound that seems to have some kind of like black magic or hypnotic kind of effect because when he plays it um you know the power goes out and there's like you know there's something banging at the door like it's a monster but then like he gets the door because there's nothing there so it's just like all this crazy shit starts happening and he starts becoming more and more convinced that maybe there is something supernatural going on now at this point i don't know like usually a movie this old i would normally just not care so much about spoiling it but i feel like a lot of people haven't really seen this one and i really liked that i didn't know even though i'm pretty sure i read the book like i said it's because i read a lot of fritz Leiber's uh stuff like his short stories and everything like when i was a teenager and i'm pretty sure i read this one too but it was so long ago that i didn't really remember any of the plot points you know what i mean all i remembered vaguely that is kind of about witchcraft and it was but it was set in the you know what was then the modern day so i didn't really see where this was going like at first i mean up to the point where you know yeah he burns all the witchcraft stuff that she's keeping in the house and you know shit's gonna go sideways then because like i said it's only like half an hour into the movie and this is a horror movie so you know that either black magic isn't going to turn out to be real and she's right or something else is going on but after that point it kind of goes off in these really really interesting directions i was kind of thinking for a time i was thinking maybe she was evil and maybe she was like doing some kind of thing with it with you know that seemed like she was trying to protect him but she really wasn't and so you can't really tell which way it's going because it goes in these real strange directions she starts to act kind of strange almost like she's hypnotized like not all the time but she does weird shit like um after the whole uh thing with the monster or whatever it was like knocking on the door and then he opens the door and nothing's there she realizes um, you know, all our protections are gone and to save you, I'm going to have to sacrifice myself. Like the story that she told earlier about the kid in Jamaica and everything, how somebody had traded, uh, their life for the little kids. And she has decided that she wants to do this. So it's like, she fucking runs out of town, like to their cottage. And I guess she's going to like drown herself or whatever, but then he chases her and like he intervenes. And then he gets to a point where he's trying magic to save her. And then at the end, like I said, I'm not sure I want to spoil it, but it turns out that there is somebody else involved as well. So the way that I thought it was going to go was not really the way it went. Like I didn't really guess where it was going. And it's interesting because I was reading some kind of contemporary reviews about it that came out at the time. And one of the reviews that it was kind of predictable and I'm like, was it though i didn't really find it all that predictable but it's like well i didn't really you know up to a certain point it was but then after that i just had no idea where it was going but that like i said i like that um and the way that i thought it was going was totally not the way that it went so like i said maybe somebody else would find it predictable it's like oh i just saw that coming a mile away but i really really didn't i was, i don't know and i was really paying attention too it's not like i was even doing something else and i even had the closed captioning on so i could catch all the dialogue and everything like that which I've been doing more and more lately because I'm getting deaf as shit in my old age. But uh, yeah, so I like to make sure I don't, I don't uh, miss anything. But yeah, so if you have Shudder, like I said, I'm sure it's in the on um, on the U.S. Shudder because I just watched it. Pretty sure it's on the U.K. Shudder. Might be on some of the other uh, countries as well because I kind of feel like this. Maybe this is um, you know a movie that's not it wouldn't be that expensive to get the rights to. So I assume that Shudder has it on probably most of their platforms. And if you really dig 60s movies, if you really dig shit about witchcraft, this is a really, really good one. Like I said, it's a British film. I feel like not a lot of people talk about it. And it's easily, it's one of the best like 60s horror movies that I've seen, like from that era, you know, and especially one of the best American international pictures, like one of the ones they, one of the ones they put out. And I mean, you can totally tell. Um, I think I forgot to mention too, that the screenplay for this was actually Richard Matheson, 
uh, started it. And then uh, it was also kind of like worked on by Charles Beaumont and George Baxt, uh, all of whom, you know, obviously Richard Matheson, super, super famous. Uh, and a lot of them did a shit ton of Twilight Zone episodes as well. And this one kind of has a little bit of a Twilight Zone feel to it, but not, but I don't know, but more cinematic. And I guess like the, the cinematography is gorgeous. I mean, you know, it's black and white. It's just these beautiful uh, shots. I especially like all the close up shots of, um, Tansy's face. She's played by, um, what's her name? I was going to say Linda Blair. It's not Linda Blair. It's Janet Blair, who had actually, previous to this, I think she'd only done musical comedies up to this uh, time. So maybe this was like the first horror she'd done or the first suspense that, uh, that she'd done. And uh, so yeah, so this has a really good, and it was also directed by uh, Sydney Hayers. Oh, and remember when I said earlier that the, that the Fritz Leiber no novel Conjure Wife had been adapted in 1979, uh, that movie was called Witch's Brew. It had uh, Terry Garr in it and Richard Benjamin and Lana Turner was in it too, which I think I've seen that. But like I said, it was I was probably a kid. That seemed like something that would have been on cable all the time. So yeah, so this is the second adaptation of this novel. I, you know, I can't remember the other two well enough to say whether this is the best one, but this is a really, really good movie. And it's just, it's funny that a movie this good would kind of like... I don't know if I necessarily like fell between the cracks, but the fact that nobody really talks all that much about it is just kind of a crime because I don't know. I just found that there was just something about the vibe of this I really liked. It's super entertaining. Um, I just found it a, just a really fun watch. And it's like, it just kept surprising me. I didn't really know where it was going. Like the suspense was really good. The acting was really good. It was just like a fun, fun movie. And I really, really like shit about black magic and charms and all that kind of stuff too. And I like that it was set in like a contemporary setting, like a, you know, like a college campus with all the, you know, with all the backbiting assholes, like trying to get promotions ahead of this guy. And they're like, use some black magic to like fuck up other people's chances and shit like that. So I thought that was like a really good, but like I said, it's not funny. It's not funny at all. Uh, not really. I don't, I can't even remember any kind of levity in this, but I don't know. There was just something like really, really entertaining about it. So if you have Shudder, uh, I would definitely recommend uh, checking this one out because I really, really liked it and I really had a good time watching it. And uh, that will do it for this Flickers of Fear. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.